Perfect. All right, guys, give me half a second to set this up properly. I just want to get rid of all of these faces here. There we go. All right, guys, here we go. Let me full screen. All right, let's get into the niche masterclass. As I mentioned, let's go through this entire presentation. If you have any aha moments, please write them down because I'd love to hear what they are when we get to the question portion. If you have questions, um, just keep them to the end. Just write them down so you do not forget them. But like I said, we'll spend as long on the questions as we need. All right. So let's get into this niche masterclass, guys. And uh, this is regardless whether you're hypnotherapy, coaching, NLP, healing, RTT. As you guys know, none of that stuff matters one bit, not even 1%. So this obviously can be applied to everything that we do as far as the, uh, the type of therapy that we do. All right. So what I think is the most important part, not only of the 100K coaching program, the niche, the marketing, your delivery, your repetition, your income, it encapsulates everything we do to become a business owner. Okay. And although deceptively simple, it's one of the biggest blocks I see is people jumping into business without having really these six elements to fall back on so when they see a problem with their business, they spend so long in all the wrong places trying to fix all the wrong things. And instead of just fixing one thing, which is what people do, guys, we're going to look at this as a complete system from top to bottom. What the niche is, is just one part of this puzzle. But there's no point just having a great niche if you can't market it, if you can't sell it, if you can't deliver it. If you can't repeat it, if you don't know what your income is going to be, if you don't know where your bottlenecks are. So although this is a niche masterclass, I guess we could relabel this as just like an entire business masterclass because we can't have one without the other. I think that's actually a song and that suits what we're doing right now. So let's go through this. So at the top here, just use this as a metaphor. And this is really how I think about business. When I think of business, this is like the metaphor I imagine. Imagine you've got a pipe like this, Okay. And the goal with this pipe would be to run water from the very top opening of the pipe all the way through to the bottom and have this water be released without any catches, without any bottlenecks. And we want the same flow at the top as far as the same pressure of that tap to be released at the bottom. Now, for any homeowners in the group, you know that sometimes during like uh, certain seasons when debris and leaves fall into your gutter, sometimes you don't clean out those gutters, those pipes get caught with rubbish, with leaf, with debris. And it doesn't matter how hard we turn the tap on or how many taps we turn on, the output of that tap can be almost like a drip. So what we do, we get a plumber in or, you know, to clean all the debris or you do it yourself. And then you'll notice you'll have flow in your pipes again. Okay, and be able to release the water without any catches. Business is no different. Business is just the tap releasing water into the pipe and then the water releasing itself at the bottom as it makes its way through the pipe. Now, in any business, regardless of the niche, we are always going to find bottlenecks. And a bottleneck is sort of where that debris collects. But no matter how hard we turn the tap on, that water can't flow because it hits that debris. And I've really isolated the six uh, most common bottlenecks, especially in the context of the 100K coaching program. With the therapy maximizers, it's actually a little bit different because there's more bottlenecks that can be seen, but right now we're focusing on the 100K. So let's look at the tap as a metaphor. The tap as a metaphor is one. One focus, one niche, one price, one offer, one inspiration, one motivation, one marketing strategy, whatever it is, it's just one of everything. Now I'll pull out again, if you're ever thinking that, okay, in order to really break through in this industry, I need to have multiple prices, multiple niches, multiple products. And uh, a lot of people actually join the 100K with that, you know, having multiple everything and realize, shit, why isn't it working? Because logically, it seems simple. Like the more I give the industry, the more money I'm going to make. But actually, the opposite happens. Okay. So what we're focusing on here is just having one, guys. And we want to make sure that we've got one of everything only to the extent of being able to control what that one thing is. And control is a big thing. Okay, so let's go through this. The tap being focused with one. The next part of the pipe really becomes your marketing. Once you've settled on the one niche, one price and one service and having just one specific focus, we wanna make sure 
that the marketing aligns with just one thing. And this is where we get very focused on the niche marketing, which we'll talk more about as we go through this. But we know that in week two of the 100K coaching program in week two, we know that this is all results driven. The marketing we're doing is not talking about ourselves, our story, our ego, the type of therapy we do, what our beliefs are, beliefs are because that's not important. What we're doing is we're using our marketing to prove to our potential clients that we know what we're talking about, to our potential clients that we are the niche expert, to our potential clients also that we have the answer to their very specific problem. Okay, the next bottleneck that can occur is the sales. And we know that in week, uh, week two, we have a predictable script to follow. The next bottleneck is the delivery, which is the MOS and the 80-20 rule, which we'll talk about today in more detail. But again, this is all in the program, guys. Number five um, is the big one, which is consistency, being able to repeat the same thing each day, having your client getting activities and knowing what to do, when to do it, how to do it, how many times to do it. But again, it all stems from the niche. There is no point marketing the business or trying to sell your service as a business if your niche isn't specific, if your niche is not real, if your niche is just made up or your niche is just based on what you want people to enjoy in their life. We do the opposite. We know we go looking for symptoms. Okay. And obviously, lastly, it really summarizes everything of the business, which is your income and your monthly goal. Okay. Now we'll get more into how to analyze the niche and how to know if you're on the right track and something like that. But for now, um, income is the only thing that we judge a business by. That's it. Because when you're getting income, it means you must have happy clients and happy clients produce income. But I get a lot of people will analyze their business based on emotions, based on what the rest of the industry tells them to do based off really crappy expert knowledge, like what other experts tell you to do when they're just guessing like everybody else, sort of like a monkey see, monkey do type attitude. We want to look at your monthly income. And although harsh, that's the only way to judge a business. Okay. So one big thing before we move on to the next slide is to realize this. And I just put this in this morning because I heard this three times yesterday on strategy calls. And I thought, okay, something's happening here. I love a lot of people, and I was in this point as well. It's quite interesting. I see sort of myself with the way I used to be, is people will say, well, Scott, I'm sort of on the fence. I know that if I put my niche out there and I put my banner out there, I've committed to that. I don't know if I'm ready for that. Well, here's the one way to get over this issue. You can call it a money block. You can call it an inner child block. I don't give a shit what you call it. They're all just symptoms anyway. But guys, just decide. Be either all in 100% for this business or be 100% all out. I think it's more emotionally unsatisfying to be sort of straddling the fence. Like one day you're in, the next day you're not, the next day you're sort of in, the day after that you're really not. Then you have two good days where you're 100% in, then the next day it's only 50% in. Commit to being all in or all out, okay? And there's no shame in being all out. Business is not for everybody. But hopefully what the, the program is doing for you is inspiring you to see how easy business can be. But it does require a lot from you guys. It requires a lot from me. It requires a lot from everybody. Sacrifice is really the name of the game here. So be in or be 100% in guys or be 100% all out. You can't be both and expect to win. Okay, that whole laptop lifestyle, I still can't figure out how people do that, even though most of the time people are bullshitting about it and saying, you know, I'm living this life overseas next to the pool and only working for half an hour a day on my laptop. I've yet to see that work and I've yet to see the results of that. And I know pretty much the majority of the time people are really lying about the results they're getting just to sell a product. It is impossible to not do this hundred percent. Okay. If you look at like someone like um, Elon Musk, okay. One of the richest men in the world, like a multi-billionaire What's funny is he's got more money than he could ever spend. He's got a product and a service that is literally changing the world inside out, but he still admits to working 15 hours a day, seven days a week. And he has a team of thousands of people. Now, I'm not saying you have to go as chaotic and psycho as that to work that many hours, but it should hopefully burst that bubble that would make someone think, okay, I've only got to work half an hour a day. There are points in your business where you might only, you know, you might be happy getting to 10 grand a month. And we can optimize that to work the least amount of hours. There is a place for that, but don't expect that to happen at the start. Business is really just inputs and outputs. It's turning the tap on 
uh, relieving the pipe of any bottlenecks that happen, being able to analyze those bottlenecks and allowing that water to flow freely, which is ultimately your income. Okay. So guys, just unmute yourself. Is that making sense so far? Just as the precursor for where we are, just unmute yourself. Give me a yes or a no. If you've got any questions, yes. let me know. Yes. Yes. Makes sense, Scott. Yes. Yes. Okay, perfect. All right, let's move on.